I'm going to work through some problems where we review the ideas behind linear independence. So first, let's go back over the definition of linear independence. So when we have a set of vectors in Rn, we say that those vectors are linearly independent if this vector equation has only the trivial solution. So that's a homogeneous equation. And what we know about that equation is that there's only two possibilities. Either there's exactly one solution. So the trivial solution here would be x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 0, etc. Or in other words, the vector x equals the zero vector. So that's the trivial solution. And sometimes that's the only solution there is. But other times there's more solutions. We have sometimes have free variables in this equation, which give us infinitely many solutions. So in those two possibilities, we have two different types of um, phrasing that we use to explain those two types of possibilities. So when we only have the real solution, we say that these vectors are linearly independent. But when we have non-trivial solutions, when we have infinitely many solutions to this equation, we say that the vectors are linearly dependent. Okay, let's work through some problems now. So we've got this set of vectors here, and we want to know, is this set linearly independent? So what we're going to do is we're going to consider the vector equation x1, v1, plus x2, v2, plus x3, v3, equals the zero vector. And we're going to try to figure out which of those two possibilities are we in. Does this vector equation only have the trivial solution, or does it have non-trivial solutions? So in order to analyze this vector equation, we're going to set up the corresponding augmented matrix. So the corresponding augmented matrix is the matrix whose columns are these three vectors that we were given, together with the zero vector, the right-hand side of that vector equation. Now remember, we could leave off that column of zeros if we wanted to, but I think it's a little bit clearer to understand what's going on if we leave it in. So then we're going to row reduce. And rather than walk you through the row reduction steps one by one, I've just put this into the computer, and here's what I get. Now, what do we do when we look at this row reduced matrix? Certainly, we have no pivot in the last column, but there was never any chance of us having a pivot in the last column. And all that no pivot in the last column tells us is that this vector equation has some solutions. But again, we already knew that. We already knew that we could plug in zero for all the x's, and that would give us a solution. The question is about whether this has any other solutions. So what's really important here is that we have no pivot in this third column. And because we have no pivot in that third column, x3 is a free variable in this vector equation, which means we do, in fact, have non-trivial solutions. So since x3 is free, this equation, the equation that we talked about up here, this equation, has non-trivial solutions. It has solutions more than just the solution where all the x's are 0. And so our answer to this question, is this set linearly independent? The answer to that question is no. No, the set v1, v2, v3 is not linearly independent. Or we could have said, no, this set is linearly dependent. All right, let's look at this question. So this gives us a set of two vectors, and the question tells us that the set is linearly dependent, and it's asking for a dependence relation for this set. So remember that linearly dependent here means that the vector equation x1, v1, plus x2, v2, equals the zero vector, has non-trivial solutions. In other words, it has solutions other than just the solution where all the x's are zero. And so a dependence relation is just one of those non-trivial solutions. Any one of the non-trivial solutions we could come up with is a dependence relation for this set. So in other words, what we need to do is solve this equation, x1, v1, plus x2, v2 equals 0. And any non-trivial solution we can find, that will be a dependence relation of what we're looking for. So we're going to solve the equation. x1, v1, plus x2, v2 
equals the zero vector. So the augmented matrix is the matrix whose columns are the vectors that we were given. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and tack on that augmented column just to make it a little easier to think about. Now we're going to row reduce. That's going to give us 1, negative 3, 0 in my first row, and then all zeros in my second row. So now, since we're actually solving this equation, it's not enough just for us to know that there are non-trivial solutions. In fact, we already knew that. That was given to us at the beginning of the problem. Now what we actually need is the solution. So what we need to do is take each non-zero row of our row-reduced matrix and rewrite it as an equation. In this case, our solution is going to be x1 equals 3x2, and x2 is free. Remember that second row of my matrix of all zeros doesn't tell me anything. The fact that I have no pivot here in this second column, that's what's telling me that x2 is free. All right, now, how do I find one of these non-trivial solutions? Well, all I need to do is pick a value for x2, and that will give me a non-trivial solution. So I'm just going to sort of arbitrarily here pick the number 10. x2 equals 10. So x1 is going to be 3 times 10, which is 30. And so one of the many, many non-trivial solutions here would be 30 times v1 plus 10 times v2, and that does in fact equal the zero vector. So that is just one of many examples of a dependence relation for this set. One more question here. Okay, so now we're not given actual vectors, we're just given information about a set of vectors. So here we're told we have a set v1 through v4, where v3 happens to equal 2 times v4, and we want to find a dependence relation for this set. So remember, a dependence relation is a non-trivial solution of the vector equation. In this case, there's four vectors, so x1, v1, plus x2, v2, plus x3, v3, plus x4, v4, equals the zero vector. So in other words, what we're looking to do is find numbers that we can multiply by v1, v2, v3, and v4, so that when we do that, that all adds up to the zero vector. And the only thing that we need to make sure of is that not all of those numbers are zero, because certainly I could put zero in front of all these vectors and that would work out. But that's not a non-trivial solution. That's the trivial solution. So we need to find some other way of combining these vectors together to get the zero vector. And the way we're going to do it is by using this piece of information, by using the fact that v3 equals 2v4. Remember that our goal is to get the zero vector. So where are we going to get the zero vector from that equation? Well, we could subtract one of the vectors from both sides. So I could rewrite that equation as v3 minus 2v4 equals the zero vector. So that's sort of close to what I want, but I'm missing the v1 and the v2. But remember, it's okay for some of the x's to be zero. We just can't have all of the x's be zero. So I can rewrite this equation by including a zero times v1 plus zero times v2. Remember that I've got one in front of that v3. Instead of thinking of that as minus two v4, I could think of it as plus negative two v4. And there I have my dependence relation. Zero v1 plus zero v2 plus 1v3 plus negative 2v4 really does equal 0. And again, since not all of the x's are 0, this counts as a dependence relation. The only thing that we can't do is have all of the x's be 0. As long as at least one of those x's is not 0, we're good. All right, so I hope this helps. You'll find homework problems like this in your assignment from this material, so take a look at this video as many times as you need to as you work through those problems.